Hey guys and girls, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Hugh C. Fishing. Today I'm going to be starting a new series that's going to be geared towards more of the beginning angler or somebody who's just getting into fishing off of a boat. And today's episode is going to be talking about uh, maps, map study. Uh, what's a topographic map? What do these lines mean? How do I read it? Where do I look? Um, a bunch of stuff. And so hopefully you guys learn something. Maybe if you're even a more advanced fisherman, you pick up on something. Maybe put it into your fishing, uh, fishing style. Um, so stay tuned. I hope you guys learned something. So map study is one of the most important things um, that can, people can do for fishing. It doesn't matter if you're a tournament guy or a weekend guy. Um, we both have a set amount of time out there. We want to catch either the most fish or the biggest fish. Me, a tournament guy, I have only eight hours to catch the five biggest fish in the lake. Um, if you're a weekend guy, you only have Saturday and Sunday to catch as many fish or as big as fish as you can. And map study is something that you can do to help maybe eliminate time on the water that you guys would spend um, fishing in unproductive waters. You can spend a lot of time at home putting waypoints or figuring out hot spots where, the, where you should maybe go check out, maybe something you guys hadn't seen before, um, or just places to try. So, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, what is a topographic map, what is a contour map, what do these lines mean, what do the spacings mean. Um, what, where are these places that people are talking about? Like, I, don't, I look at a map of all these lines and I don't even know where to look. It's so confusing. Um, so to start break it down, what is a topographic map? What is a contour map? Um, it is a map that is showing the changes in elevation. As you get more detailed, um, you can get up to a, f a foot change in depth, uh, as you can see on a map. Um, some paper maps um, and other maps aren't going to be as detailed. You can get one, two, three, five feet changes in depth. But as you get more accurate, it'll help give you a better lay of the land of what's below the surface. Um, so hopefully you guys can go out there. Uh, no questions asked. You know exactly what's there. You know it's below water, how it's set up, and where these fish should be when you go fish these places. Um, so how do you get these, how do you get these uh, depth changes? Like what is it? They use these depth changes, it's called uh, ISO lines, pretty much, which means same. Everything's going to be the same. It's going to be the same elevation at these lines. So you're going to go, I'm going to get, we got a picture of my fish finder a second and I'll show you guys. Um, these lines are going to be the same depth all across the lake, right? So you have, imagine you're at, at sea level. We'll, we'll, call, we'll call the shoreline sea level, right? Uh, as you go, as you go deeper into the lake, you just have you have the same line that runs across the whole shoreline. It's gonna be one foot deeper. Imagine the whole lake dropped a foot. Now you have a new shoreline. That's exactly what it's gonna be, but below the water. As you keep dropping, dropping uh, water levels a foot, you're gonna have a new shoreline. It's gonna be a new map of the lake, and that's exactly what it is. It's using lines to show you the changes in depth on a lake. So we'll we'll pull up my map real quick. Uh, I'm gonna restart the camera. I've got a GoPro in my hand. I'm gonna be talking to the camera, picking up audio with this camera me recording with the GoPro in this hand. So uh, I'm about to show you guys what exactly a topographic or contour map will look like uh, on a paper map or on your fish finder or website app. So like I just said, um, the, the map is using lines to help show you changes in depth uh, across the lake. So we'll zoom in right here. I'm looking at a map of Sam, Lake Sam Rayburn uh, or Sam Rayburn Reservoir, sorry. And so we're coming I'll show you. So yellow, that's going to be our land, right? Each one of these lines, like I just said, is going to be showing us a change in depth. So each one of these lines on my map is going to be showing us a one foot change in depth. So as you go to the first line, now you're one foot deep, two feet deep. When you go out here, we can see the number 15 feet deep. We'll go a little further out, 20 feet, 21 feet, 22 feet. So as you go further from the bank and have come across more lines, you're getting deeper and deeper. So that's exactly what it is. You're, you're just reading depth. Um, and the spacing between these lines is huge, right? So like I just said, each one is only a one foot change in depth. So, but that can change, right? Not everything is a 45, not everything is like a one degree bank, not everything is a 90 degree bank. The, so the spacing of the lines will tell you a lot about the lay of the lake um, and the slope of the bottom. So we can come over here. We'll see, we can see that there's we're in 22 feet right here. This this contour line that's running right here, 22 feet. This contour line is gonna be 23 feet. Like I said, we're just going across one line 
that's 23 feet so look we come from here we come from here we go a couple hundred feet before we even cross into the next contour line that's that's a couple hundred feet with only a one foot change in depth so that's going to tell you that it's a pretty shallow sloping um, point or shallow sloping bank or bottom uh, and as you get lines that are closer and closer together you're going to be having a huge change or much more much greater change in depth but not a change in distance so we can come close to the bank right here like i said yellow is the bank we have these lines that are so stacked up it's almost black you can see where i'm pointing we have so many lines so close together that that means we're dropping off so fast but not moving not moving as much uh, distance but we're dropping off so fast in depth that these lines are super stacked there's no there's not a lot of space between it so that's how you tell a steeper steeper sloping bank from a shallower sloping bank so there so that kind of goes over the basics of a map how to read a map so using so using these spacings between the lines we can help to figure out maybe a pattern or something like that say hey i'm catching them on a flat hey i'm catching them on a 45 degree bank hey i'm catching them on a bluff wall um, these are all things where you can if you start catching them in one place you can look at a map don't even have to be inside of it you can look at a map and figure out exactly where another spot like that is on the lake um, where you can go to and hopefully catch fish um, so that's just another that's a way you can do it um, you can also help to do it by changing the color like i said or on my map uh, blue is going to be shallow water white is going to be deeper water so we got the bank blue water deeper water is going to be white we're going to cross a lot of lines to get to deeper water um, I can change the depth at which my color changes. So right now I've got it changing at 23 or 24 feet. If I were to change it shallower, or if I were to change it to be shallower, this would be white. So I might not even I might not even care about something that's 25 feet deep. I would only care about something that's eight feet deep if I'm looking in a certain depth. So I could come along here. If this is an eight foot line, I could say, hey, there's a little there's a little point in an eight foot. And that could be something I could key on really quick, um, and just another just another tool to help you eliminate water quicker. Or maybe find a hot spot or something like that. And talking about hot spots, um, you hear all these people talk about all the time, like points, humps, uh, channels, all this all this stuff. Like, what is this? How do I find it on a map? How do I find these places to fish? Um, and uh, kind of the way I look at it is is uh, the lake. Sam Rayburn Reservoir, a lot of these reservoirs, or all these reservoirs, were just land before the dam was formed on the creek channel or river channel. So whatever you, whatever I see behind me, that pretty much imagine that below the surface. You're going to have points, you're going to have high spots, you're going to have valleys, you're going to have all this stuff also underneath the surface. So a point above above ground is also going to look like a point below ground. It's just where, It's just where the contour lines come together and i'll show you an example on my map of what a point will look like on land and water so you guys can help to see the difference so yellow is going to be land on this so we're coming around we're literally coming to a straight point this will be considered a point where it'll literally kind of form a v or an a um and you can see that below the surface too like i said we're coming out here i'll zoom back out you can see the contour line 23 feet coming to a point it's pretty much a v or it's a sharp point uh, points are great all times of the year. This is where fish go to feed. This is where bait comes, uh, gets suspended above, comes to just roam. Um, points are, are key spots all times of the year. Um, they can move up move up and down them. Uh, it's just a great place to look for big fish and a lot of fish. So we just figured out how to see what a point looks like uh, on our map. Uh, another another uh, key spot is a hump or an under, underwater island. And what that is is... You've got deeper water on all sides and it comes up to a high spot um, that's shallower. And so we can we can take a look at that right here. Like I said, my white is gonna be my deeper water, my blue is gonna be my shallow water. So we have white all around and we're coming up to this blue spot, which is gonna be a lot shallower than the rest of this. Um, that's, a, that's a perfect example of one. Some, most of the time they're shaped like circles, uh, but they don't always have to be. They can be a bunch of different shapes. This is just a pretty good example of a hump right here. Where it comes up and forms kind of like an underwater island that's what some people call it and when you have these humps you also have saddles just like the shape of a horse saddle that you or a saddle that you throw up on a horse at the back of it you're gonna have a higher spot in the middle you're gonna have a lower spot at the front of it you're gonna have a higher spot uh, and it's the same way with the saddle and fishing or on the lake so like I said blue's gonna be shallow water on both sides we have shallow water shallow water in the middle we're gonna have we're gonna go down 
So we're shallow, we're going deeper and deeper and deeper. Wait a second, we get to this flat part. That's gonna be the deepest part of the saddle. Because once we cross this point, you can see we, we cross into more contours. We're coming up shallower and shallower until we get to the shallow point. So that's a good example of a saddle. Uh, it's a pinch point and these fish can sometimes hold off there. If they're feeding on top of that hump right there on the map, they can sometimes uh, pull off into that saddle a little bit deeper water and rest, but it's also a pinch point. So if wind is funneling through there, it's a good place for them to ambush bait that might be blown over their heads. Um, so it's, it's, a good, it's a good deep water spot to check out. So the next thing we're gonna be looking at is creek channels. And uh, like I said, these reservoirs were just land. They had creeks and rivers running through it before a dam was put on the river and flooded all this land. So when you have a creek, it's gonna be deeper. It's gonna be deeper, and that's where the water ran before the water before the lake was formed. And so you can see, I'll zoom out. We're in the back of a creek right here. This is a big creek where a lot of guys fish. And on my map, on my map, I have the creek channel to be orange. You can see the creek channel coming all the way out in orange. We're going further and further out. We're following it all the way out into the main lake. And this is where it dumps into the main river channel. You can see it's a lot steeper here. Like I said before, we have that we have that black kind of from how close these contour lines are. So you can tell it gets really deep really fast. We can see we got 37 feet. We have 36 feet. So that means it gets really, really deep in here. You can see 54 feet in the creek channel, the river channel. And that's a good example of showing you what a creek channel or river channel will look like. You have a shallow, and then you get into the creek channel edge, it starts to drop off. It'll bottom out, and it'll come right back up, and it'll get shallow again. That's exactly what a creek channel or river channel will look like. Um, and that's kind of to show you guys what the contours will look like whenever you guys look at it on your map. <clears throat> These creek channels are awesome, especially on Lake Sam Rayburn and Toledo Bend. These are highways for fish to go in and out of creeks. Like I said, this is a huge... This is a huge fishing creek where a lot of people fish, a lot of big fish are caught. These fish will use th these creek channels as a highway. They'll literally travel along this orange orange line because it's deeper water, it's always got bait. They'll be traveling along this all the way back into the back of these creeks sometimes. Okay, so I got really pissed off. My GoPro is not working. Um, it won't stop dying and the card won't stop messing up. So uh, these creek channels are um, great places. These They're pretty much highways for fish. Um, it's got deeper water bait loves to hang out in it and they'll use them to travel in and out of these creeks from the back of the creek to the main lake so that's a, that's a really good really good spot and people look for the inside turns and the outside turns where it bends and I'll show you guys that in a second we'll have inside creek channel turn inside creek channel turn inside creek channel turn and we also have the outside creek channel turns outside so I just kind of show you guys um, what a creek channel looks like on your map uh, like I said, on mine it's orange. On other on other uh, maps, it not, might not be orange. Uh, but creek channels are a great way to see where these fish are moving from. It's always got it's always gonna have deeper water. Always gonna have bait in it, and it's not always good for fishing. Or it's not just good for fishing deep. Um, a lot of good a lot of my good shallow spots I look for on my map before I even go to the lake, and they're shallow spots where the creek will just run really close to the bank. So I know that that shallow spot has great deep water access. That have has has access to bait so if a fish is wanting to sit in deeper water and pull up to feed up shallow i know that there's a chance for me to catch a really really big fish if the creek channel goes close to the bank and i'll show you guys that right here comes up real close comes up real close comes up real close so all these stretches where the creek channel runs really really close to the bank uh all around that point or all around that island those could be good spots um, for fish to just pull up and feed really quick and then pull back off into deeper water. Uh, fish always want to make sure that they have a deep water route to escape to if something happens. It's just it's just the way fish are. They want to have an escape route if something goes wrong. Um, so these are great places to check. And on that last point, we saw that there was a roadbed. Roadbeds are a great place to fish in the summertime and the wintertime. Like I said, uh, this was land before the lake was formed. So there were roads... There were bridges, there were, there were ponds, pond dams, or farm ponds, and these are still underwater. They're not, they're not just disappearing, they're not disintegrated. Um, so we'll look at this roadbed, and you can tell a roadbed because of the, uh, it's just a line, and it'll say roadbed on it. But wherever a roadbed crosses a creek channel or a river channel, there's going to be a bridge. Um, 
and you can tell a bridge on mine it says submerged bridge it's gonna be a yellow square yellow box um, that's how I'm gonna find it these are great places to go because you know you have a lot of depth change because of the creek channel you have a hard bottom because of the road bed because of the bridge you're gonna have bait because it's a creek channel this is an awesome spot to come look although they're really pressured they do produce some of the biggest fish in the lake and are always a spot to go catch fish uh, even the bridges above water like the 147 bridge on Sam Rayburn you can always go to the bridge pilings and catch fish uh, it's the same exact thing underwater um, you have to remember that the stuff you see above water is gonna be the same thing you see below water um, so that's always a good thing to check out and I'll show you guys the roadbed in a second got the roadbed coming across right here we got the creek channel in orange we got the submerged bridge right here so guys and girls we talked about um, what a contour or topographic map is what these lines mean how to read it what the spacing between these are what people are talking about when they say point a hump all this other stuff we're figuring out how to find it on a map and also not just how to find deep spots but also shallow spots so this is kind of my my uh, way of breaking down a breaking down a map and looking at a lake this is a great way to eliminate a lot of time before you even get to the lake um, once you have enough practice i don't do any map study at my house i can literally just show up to a lake i've never been to before my maps are so good they're so accurate that and I've got the, pat the seasonal patterns in my head, what I think I'm gonna do there, that I can just go and run a spot. I can change my settings on my graph to show me the different depths, different color changes for different depths, and hopefully be able to form a pattern and narrow, narrow water down quicker to find the biggest and most fish possible. So I hope you guys learned something. I hope this was pretty informative to people who didn't know much about maps. Uh, maybe people who did know much stuff about maps, maybe they just picked, on, picked up on something that I said that maybe they didn't know or do. So. I uh, hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions about maps, uh, anything I, you think I missed, make sure to comment that below. If you have any other ideas about this series uh, for beginner fishermen, make sure to let me know. Uh, hopefully I'll make a video about it. So uh, I want to say thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something about maps, and I'll see you guys next time.